we're speaking to Peter, the archivist for the Rusty Hevelin collection, and if you would please just describe the collection for us. This is the Rusty, James Rusty Hevelin collection of science fiction materials, and it includes fanzines going back to the earliest days of science fiction fandom. It includes pulp magazines going all the way back to the turn of the century. Uh, convention materials going back to the late 30s all the way up to 2011. Uh, it has uh, hundreds of boxes of both paperback and hardcover books. It is an amazing collection in every respect for every one of those elements. Uh, it's one of the greatest pulp collections, pulp magazines of every genre in the country and it's probably upwards of 400 archival uh, bankers boxes and other sized boxes full of materials. There's films in here as well, audio tapes, uh, photographs, artwork. It's just the, an amazing legacy of uh, someone who was not just a dedicated science fiction fan, but a rare collector, a really rare collector of uh, all kinds of materials. You can read the zines and get the whole history of science fiction fandom from reading Rusty's zines. You can see the beginnings of science fiction in the pulps, and you can see the fruits of all of those early decades in the paperbacks and the hardcover books of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Now, I knew Rusty. I knew he had a, a really good pulp collection, but I never knew he had anything before that. Could you describe what he had in addition to his pulp collection? Sure, sure. Um, what he had is basically things like Argosy, Adventure, uh, these boxes are full of the absolute cream of, uh, here's some dupes already. This is the absolute cream of what you could find on a newsstand. And Rusty's collection goes all the way, the earliest one I've found so far is 1905. And I'm thinking that as I begin to open things up, I'm going to find things even older. You can see that it's adventure stories, it's horse racing stories, Grand National. Uh, these uh, authors are authors like uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. Um, these are all pulp authors and this is probably one of the hallmarks of this entire collection because Rusty collected across every genre. Uh, there are more adventure, there are boxing stories, there's romance, westerns, um, Tarzan and the Magic Men by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And this would have been serialized. So here you have a lot of the authors that would go on to become uh, much more established and famous authors, both science fiction and, and otherwise. Planet Stories, uh, Lee Brackett, Ray Bradbury, people like that. Hi. I'm Peter Balistrieri. I'm a processing librarian with Special Collections and University Archives at the University of Iowa's main library, and I work primarily with the James L. Rusty Evelyn Collection, uh, where I process and curate the materials. The, the work that I do really consists of taking the boxes from the collection as they came from Rusty's home and taking a box going inside and seeing what's there. So if I just take out a handful of things I see that there are 
registration forms from conventions. This is from ICON 34. Here is the uh, New England Science Fiction Association, NESPA. This is instant message. This is their newsletter. And so here's Boscone, the uh, Boston Convention. This is from Boscone 44 from 2007. So then what I do is to take these uh, and begin to sort. So the first sort is a rough sort. I sort them into the categories that present themselves. And early on, what I began to see was that I had fanzines going all the way back to the 1930s, the very beginnings of fandom. I had convention materials going all the way back to the beginning of science fiction conventions. And I had paperback books, I had hardcover books, pulp magazines, the magazines that were on newsstands, the magazines that gave science fiction its start, and these are two detective examples. Uh, and then I also had things like all of the business records from Rusty Heflin's life as a huckster at conventions. Uh, I have correspondence, hundreds and hundreds of letters in between Rusty and science fiction fans, Rusty and fans of pulp magazines. Uh, in those piles of correspondence there are many, many letters from the most famous names in science fiction, many of them asking Rusty if he would sell their books at conventions and uh, offering him a sizable cut from uh, whatever he would get from, from selling their books. People like uh, Roger Zelazny, uh, uh, Theodore Sturgeon, uh, all kinds of people writing to Rusty Hevelin asking him could, they, could he please represent them at the con by selling their books. Uh, those are, are fascinating letters. Of course, there are lots and lots of letters there going back and forth between uh, Gay Haldeman and Joe Haldeman, both close friends of Rusty's for many, many years. And then, you know, just so many different things from Rusty's life, things that he collected, things that he saved. Uh, and, and once I get the initial sort done, uh, these are all fanzines, or most of everything on this table are fanzines, I then begin to alphabetize. And once I'm done alphabetizing, then I have to pick out individual fanzine titles and alphabetize them and put them all in chronological order. And when that's done, uh, I just open another box and I start that process all over again. Right now, the things that are processed to uh, the point that I just described are being stored on another floor of the library. And uh, when the things on this table uh, are in chronological order, they'll move and be added to those things. And I'll just keep going. Uh, about 25 more boxes of fanzines and convention materials to go. And beyond that, about another 350 boxes of books, magazines, and uh, other wonderful things, other treasures waiting to be discovered. And all this was found in Rusty's house? This the was part. all in Rusty's house. Wow. It all comprised what he uh, um, uh, sold to the library and became the Rusty Hevelin collection. Cool. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yeah, these are my, so these are my special things, you know. These are like the, I pull them off, I put them in special folders, and, uh, oh, here, this stuff. This is all Hecto. This is 38. This is from 38, and beautiful multicolored illustrations. 
this beautiful deep purple ink that you see in zine after zine after zine. Look at this. This is Fan of Science Digest. This is the publication that Rusty would come to uh, help work on after he moved to Philadelphia. It was being run by Bob Madel, Jack Agnew, John Boltadonis, uh, Willie Conover, and eventually Rusty would have a column in here, but under one of his many aliases. So Rusty had quite a number of aliases. Uh, Rusty Baron, uh, uh, Rusta Baron, all is one word. But look at the color effects that they were able to get with these pans of jelly and colored pencils going down into jelly. And then, you know, these are just fans who are doing all of the artwork. Some of them are trained artists or people who are interested in art. They're all very young, but some of them are just fans with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of time on their hands. These were different times, and so they had a lot of time on their hands. Digest. Here's a beauty. I mean, look at that. Space helmet, space suit, and some kind of a ray gun or blaster. And this is from the 30s. This, this, <laughs> this ball has been rolling a long time. The mm -hmm. science fiction ball has been rolling a long time. And from the very beginning, it's fans that have kept that ball rolling. Everybody volunteering their time, everybody pooling their resources, things that still go on today. I love these multicolor drawings. They show you that they weren't content to just do something, anything. They wanted to try to do the best they could with something that was really interesting. This is so subtle. These color gradations between the orange and the yellow of the rays of the sun and then the, the purple or magenta lines, spaceships flying around in the sky because that's what the future is going to be like. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful copy of Stunning Scientifan. And this is from the age when science fiction was still not an acceptable term. It was scientifiction. That's what everyone, that's what all the fans called it, was scientifiction. And STF, that's why STF stands for science fiction, because it really stands for scientifiction. And, uh, so this is Stunning Scientifan. You have this cover. In this issue, a couple of super fans, Sam Moskowitz, Robert Lowndes, Robert Lowndes, Robert Doc Lowndes, who was also a great writer. Edgar Rice Burroughs is in this issue of Stunning Scientifan, the zine. And then a number of other people, Horny, uh, Guy Francis. But the real beauty of this zine, even though this is a great zine, 
the path. You have this wonderful picture, but then you have the addressee. And the addressee is someone who's named Bradbury. That's all. He was about 17 when this was delivered. This Z delivered to his parents' house at 3054 and a half West 12th Street, Los Angeles, California. And it's got a two cent stamp on it. So you can see that even this early, he was already Bradbury, the legend. We have quite a bit of Bradbury in Rusty's collection, and I think that's because of Rusty's early connection to LASFS and the fact that he would have been at meetings. He would have been at lots and lots of meetings in California with Ray Bradbury. And uh, by all reports, Ray Bradbury was a very sort of loud and extremely exuberant fan who more often than not would have to be told to quiet down by the older fans or told to shut up. And Rusty, of course, uh, you know, a quiet, uh, a, a more of a quiet person. But interesting to think of the two of them as teenagers sitting on a couch somewhere talking about H.G. Wells. You know, it's just really wonderful. So things like this, I love these sort of little moments and, and things that I can connect to other stories and, and mm -hmm. history. So that's another big part of what I'm doing with the collection is um, curating it and, and trying to tease these stories out of it. Here is a, a cartoon and this is by one of the greatest of fan artists, Derek Carter. Uh, there are lots of collections of Derek Carter's drawings and zines that feature Derek Carter's illustrations inside of the Hevelin collection. This is Derek Carter, and this is his cartoon of Rusty with the beard and, of course, the omnipresent t-shirt. And he's holding a pot up to his face. Here you have Derek Carter doing a caricature of himself and Derek Carter says, Mr. Hevlin, sir, are you in love with your saucepan? And Rusty replies, no, little artistic nit. My wiry beard helps me save on scouring pads. Cute. So this is just something nice that I think Derek Carter made for Rusty and then gave to him, probably at a con, possibly even at a con when Rusty might have been Toastmaster or Guest of Honor. Uh, he might have been the person who organized the Huckster Room. Derek Carter might have been the artist, the guest of, uh, the artist Guest of Honor for that con. It's, you know, it's impossible to know all of the details of a collection this vast or of a life like Rusty's. But it's amazing how if you devote yourself to this collection, you can learn so much and, and put together stories that you, know, you wouldn't have imagined were possible just by looking at these kinds of materials. This is a, a really great drawing. And that's so far, that's about it. I'm gonna be working more and more with the pulps as the year goes on. Uh, the next six to eight months, I, as soon as I get farther through the zines, I'm gonna switch over to the pulps and start working more on them. And I'll be doing a lot of sorting and breaking them down into different genres and then starting to see what are the oldest and the best and which ones have the most interesting writers inside and the most interesting covers and all of these things that I'm finding I'll be trying to tell people about them in small ways through the Hevelin Tumblr account which anyone can look at you don't have to belong to Tumblr 
to look at the Hevelin account. It's Hevelin Collection on Tumblr. And uh, it's just more fun than I could ever have imagined uh, any job could be. And it's a labor of love. Uh, I have two really main uh, things that I try to keep in mind every day when I'm working. That's to keep faith with Rusty and to work on this collection with as much respect and as much care as I can. And the second thing that I always try to keep in mind is that uh, I have a certain obligation to science fiction fandom to make sure that uh, scholars who come in the future will be able to understand how important the role of fandom has been in the creation, the maintenance, and the future of the science fiction genre.